Hey, what's going on guys? I'm Brad and this is Trail Recon. And on this series of videos for Project XJ Overland, my teenage boys and I have been working on a 1999 Jeep Cherokee and turning it into an Overland vehicle. And man, we have transformed it quite a bit, but there's a list over my shoulder of things we've still got left to do. I'm gonna show you today a couple of the things we just took care of, which we slapped on a new bumper, we installed a new winch, and we took care of our free range battery problem that we were having, we took care of a little odds and ends, and then when we pulled the bumper off, we found something very interesting that I wanna share with you. Also, you're gonna to wanna to make sure you stick around to the end of the video because we bring you up to speed on where we're at with the budget so far on this build, and if you're an XJ owner, I need your help with something, so stick around for that. Let's get started and let me show you what we've been up to. We picked up a Smittybilt XRC front bumper, which is gonna really improve our approach angle off-road and give us a place to mount a winch. It came with some really sturdy mounting brackets and all the hardware we were gonna need. Now the first order of business is to take off the six bolts, three on each side to get those removed. Access is pretty easy and didn't take very long to get those undone. Once you got everything removed, that bumper just comes right off, no problems at all. It's nice to have two hands to do it, but it's not very heavy and it could be a one-man job. So on the driver's side, there's three bolts that gotta come off and two are holding up the steering box. So you gotta pull those off. And then there's one up in the little corner here. And then that allows you to slide in the new mounting plate. The new hardware that was going on there, we threw a little bit of blue Loctite on there just to be safe. So lining everything up was a little bit of a hassle. You've got the plate and you've got the steering box and there's this little tab inside there. You just gotta make sure that it's all squared up before you start tightening it down. So on the passenger side, you've got to drill some holes, and it calls for a 7 16 drill bit. Well, guess what? My Harbor Freight drill bit wasn't tapered at the end, and this thing doesn't fit the chuck of my drill, so I had to go out and get a new one. So on the passenger side, you're going to mount up the bracket, and that's going to be your template to drill your holes. Make sure you got a good sturdy drill and a good bit. Once your new holes are drilled, you're going to be mounting the bolts in through the frame to this kind of contraption looking thing. It's got some built-in nuts on it. It comes with this little handle, and you just Throw it right in there and it fits pretty well. Just take your time and hand tighten everything. You don't want to force anything. Get it all lined up and having a flashlight handy to help you figure out where those nuts and bolts line up inside the frame is very helpful. Once all your mounting brackets are bolted up, you're ready to go to put the bumper on. Now we lined everything up and we just put in one bolt on each side and then just kind of let it dangle until we could get all the other four bolts lined up. Oh, and we did go ahead and trim some of the fender liner, but we only had a fender liner on the driver's side. Let me explain. So there was no fender liner on the passenger side, and when we got up underneath there, we noticed this mangled mess. Yep, that's right. I'm pretty convinced that at some point in time, this Cherokee was in a front-end accident and took out the passenger side. Because, you know, if you remember, our headlight was broken and our battery box was missing. This kind of explains things now. But thankfully, there's no major frame damage because when we mounted up the bumper, everything lined up really well. All the lines, all the gaps, they're actually really straight and really nice. There's just eight bolts that gotta be tightened up and we were done. We did find that putting a little upward pressure as we were tightening things kept the bumper pretty leveled out. Our next order of business was to install a battery box. Now we picked one up from JCR and we thought, man, this would be a five minute job. Well, not so fast. I think whatever accident was it in kind of misaligned the bolts so they weren't fitting very straight. So we had to drill out the holes and make them a little larger. We did go ahead and paint up below where the battery box is with some rust stop paint since there was a lot of exposed metal there. And once we made the holes larger in the battery box plate, it lined up really well. But there were still some more challenges to come. Because as you can see right here, the base of the battery tray sits really close to the fan belt too close for my comfort level, so it was time to get out the grinder and take a chunk off so we could make some more room. Now our clearance was much better. So now the rest of the install should be easy, right? Yep, still more and more challenge to come. So after placing the battery on the tray and then putting the bracket in, we thought we'd just mount it down and man, we'd be done. Well, the bracket was rubbing right up against the radiator hose pretty hard, so that's not something we can have. So once again, time to break out the grinder. We did make sure after we were done grinding that we covered any exposed metal with paint. And after all that, it's finally done and we can finally install our battery and have it secured and not have to worry about it. You know, it's just kind of funny that sometimes you think a project's going to be really simple and it turns out to be a little more challenging than you expected. 
Our next project is to install a Smitty built winch. You know, you got to have some good recovery just in case those sticky situations arise. And this is the same winch that I've had on my Jeep for a while, and it's good quality stuff, and it comes with everything you need. I told my son to go watch a couple YouTube videos, and he's going to do all the install on this one. Now you get a lot of options with this winch on where you can mount the controller. We decided to do it over the motor instead of over the cable. That just gives us a little more low profile. Hooking up all the wires couldn't be more simple. They're color coded and they're labeled with letters so it makes it really easy. And then there's just two major wires that you run all the way to the battery. It looks like a tangled mess but truly it's not. It's really very simple to wire this winch up. Next up is mounting the fairly to the bumper. Now this is made out of aluminum and it's a little shiny. I think that this may end up getting blackened out in the future. Before you actually attach the winch to the bumper you've got to put these little square nuts into these little compartments. And then you're all set to mount up the winch. Now you put it into place and there's four bolts that go up underneath and then mounting the wires you're going to have to route those in between the bumper and the grill and then come up all the way back through to the top. You got to find a way to kind of snake it up up to the battery but being patient and having a second set of hands helps to get that wire all the way through. Next order of business was to lay out all the synthetic line so we could get it all untangled and then feed the line through and just bolt up the end tab. Then we started up the Jeep, turned it on, and started spooling. Now we're doing this by hand now, but later on we're going to go attach the rope to a tree and let it spool up with the weight of the vehicle pulling it. That will make sure it's good and tight on there. So a new bumper, a new winch, a new battery box. Man, we just did a lot of work that made this thing much more capable. You know, our approach angle off-road is going to be so much better, and now having that winch to be able to recover, and it just looks like a good off-road vehicle now, don't you think? And it's so gratifying to get all that work done. And working with my boys in the garage, it's just been such a blast. And now we've actually added some things that are gonna really help us off-road. You know, our approach angle is gonna be better, having that bumper sit up higher. And now we can recover ourselves if we get in a sticky situation, which hopefully we won't. Let me bring you up to speed on where we're at with the budget, guys. Up until this time, we were at $6,842. The bumper was $450. The winch was $449. The battery box was $89, bringing our new grand total to $7,841. I got no complaints, guys. I'm very happy with where we're at with the build so far. It's going great, and now it looks awesome, and it's capable, and we are getting ready to take it off-road. In fact, we're going to be out at Tierra de Sol uh, next weekend, and the plan is to have this out there with us, assuming there's no issues between now and then. So if you're going to be out at TDS, make sure you look for us. Okay, in the last video, I asked, hey, should we keep the grill, the color of the car, or should we paint it black? And man, you guys chimed in and it was 50-50 split pretty much across the board where people were like, no, I use the Plasti Dip and black it out. And other people were like, no, I love the color and keep it. So look, what we're gonna do is we finally decided, you know what, we're gonna do a mix. We're gonna keep the color, but we're gonna black out the inside fins, which I think is how it came stock originally, but right now the whole thing is just blue. And I think with all the black that we've got on the bumper, just keeping that color in front is really going to make it pop. So I thank you everybody for your opinions. It really was a tough decision, but I think we're going to go with that. And so here in the future, we'll show you how we do that. And hey, for my XJ owners out there who may have an aftermarket exhaust, I'd like to hear from you in the comments below. Tell me what exhaust you're using and do you like it? We're looking to replace ours because it's hanging down low. It's got some holes in it. It's rusted out. It's time to get replaced. I'm not looking to spend a whole lot of money, but definitely want to get something that's good quality. So I'd like to hear from some folks out there that are running aftermarket exhausts. Hey, as always in this video, I will leave a link in the description for everything that we installed today. So if you're building the Jeep yourself and you want to put it on some of this stuff on yours, you can go check that out. If you're visiting the channel for the first time, make sure you hit that subscribe button. And until next time, we'll see you out on the trail.